Imagine asking your AI assistant to analyze your code, manage your GitHub issues, and even tell the story of your coding journey, all through a single protocol. Hey developers, welcome to GitHub Checkout, your inside look at the latest GitHub features and updates that level up your workflow. I'm Andrea Griffiths, Senior Developer Advocate. Today, we're diving into something that's going to transform how you interact with GitHub through AI-powered tools. We're exploring the new GitHub MCP server, Joining us is Toby Padilla, Principal Product Manager at GitHub, who's here to walk us through this exciting new open source project and show us how it works. Welcome, Toby. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks for having me. So we talked a lot about MCPs, but I think we need to start from the beginning for folks who might not even know. What is MCP? What does MCP stand for? So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. And what this is, is a standardized community driven way for LLMs or AI to call tools. Within the last year or so, Anthropic created this community driven protocol and we've seen it explode. It's, it's kind of a social innovation more than a technical one where they got a lot of momentum behind building MCP servers. And now there's many of them you can plug into what you would call an MCP host, which in our case is going to be VS code. And it just adds tooling to your AI environment. Very cool. And so now GitHub has its own official open source MCP server. Yep. Can you show us where does it live? Let's take a look at the repo and maybe talk us through installation and then we're going to see it in action. We just open sourced this on Friday and it's um, been well received. It's all open source. It works with our API. And so to install it, we've made it very easy. If you have VS code or VS code insiders, you can simply click one of these buttons. You do need a couple things before you get it up and running. One is that you need to generate what we call a PAT, which is a personal access token, so that we can grant the MCP server permissions to do actions on your repos and, and grab data from our API. There's also the easiest way to set it up, which is with Docker. You can grab the binaries because this is a Golang project and it compiles and run it directly on your machine, but doing it with Docker is the easiest way. So if you're on VS Code, VS Code Insiders, just click this. It will prompt you for your personal access token, which you can generate by clicking on this. If you're in another sort of MCP host, you can look at these JSONs and you can paste them in. So here's the Claude desktop one, and you'll see it's asking for your personal access token. You can just go ahead and put that here. Um, and after that, you should be able to run it. Here's our MCP server for GitHub. It's got all these things in it. You can add issues, create branches, edit files. It's really good for a lot of things though. So I put together a few queries that I think are kind of cool to demonstrate this. Um, one of the things it can help with is ideation or, or thinking about what you want to build. And it's kind of interesting because um, here I'm going to say, list the 10 most popular repos on GitHub and summarize what they have in comments. Like what's been cool with the community? What do people like the most? And so let's take a look at what this does. Here you'll see, this is actually GitHub Copilot invoking this tool in the MCP server. It's hitting our API and it's finding all of the top repos based on stars. And we'll see, it's probably grabs 10 of these things. And if you look at the commonalities, it's like it's educational focused, community driven, resource aggregation. And this is true. You see a lot of these awesome things for this, right? Lists of these things, but this shows you that there's an appetite for these types of projects. So if you're looking through here and seeing a gap, maybe it's time to build one of these things, right? And that the community will respond very well to it. Particular to our project, I've been running this on a regular basis. So summarize the changes that we've made to the GitHub, GitHub MCP server repo since its first release. It went, found the repo, listed the commits since this version. And here's a summary of everything that is probably going to be in the next version that we release. So we've fixed the code owners. Um, we've got some bug fixes in here. We added a new tool that's going to be available. We've got some pretty printing stuff. So that's pretty helpful. You can imagine running this on somebody else's repo and just saying like, oh, okay, this is going to be in the next release. Maybe I'll wait to install it. That is amazing. I love how it lists the work process. Yeah. So we see four of the tools that are available for the server now. How many tools are there total? Um, 31 right now. Is that a way I can contribute to the project if I think of an idea for a tool? Absolutely. If you see a gap between what we have and what's in our API, we will absolutely love to get a pull request with it implementing. When you present all these tools to the LLM, it works better if you do fewer. So something that we're thinking through is grouping these 
around sort of like use cases or personas or roles going forward. So this is all um, very new. This one's kind of fun. So this is useful. So I'm saying rate the open pull requests on our repo and based on how cool they are. And you're like, you know, what, what does AI think is cool, right? Like, is it, does it know, is it, is it good at doing this? And, and it turns out it's actually pretty good. Okay, here we go. So adding a bunch of features, that's pretty cool. That's an eight. List repositories, by it's, it's a single feature. So I guess it thinks it's slightly less cool. It, it seems to like the optimization for Docker, right? Like nine, nine out of 10. Here, we just made some readme updates, six out of 10. Bumping the Golang version is apparently not all that cool. Here's what we were just talking about. Partitioning the tools by feature, right? And this is something that we're working on. And it, sees, it says that it's like an eight out of 10. So you can get a sense of what's impactful or what's interesting thing is kind of a goofy way to do it and this one's kind of related um but it's it's around issues just to show this is what we should potentially be working on right it's going to grab the open issues that we have and rank them by what it sees so here it's like critical bugs feature requests enhancements so it's it's got a sense of again the impactfulness of some of these requests or some of the issues that have been submitted and it's able to classify them and and as a product manager this is saving me a lot of time if you've ever used um something like spotify at the end of the year they do like a spotify wrapped where they they do an editorialized summary of of what you've listened to throughout the year well it turns out with our mcp server you can do this for your entire career so i'm gonna say look at my github repos and write an editorialized summary of my journey as a developer and what this is going to do is look at my entire history on github and then write something cool about my journey as a developer and i've been on github for like 16 17 years or something like that since from the beginning toby so yeah yeah i've been i've been an old school user um so it's gonna have a lot it's very interesting to see what what ai thinks of your work and it's actually pretty good at, at grouping stuff better than i am at explaining all the stuff that i've done I love it. It's going by your eras. And yes, I was involved with music and tech. And then I was doing some cryptography stuff. And I started playing with Rust and Go. And now you see it, it's like, hey, you're doing MCP stuff. I think that people would be very interested in, in sharing their journeys as a developer there. Toby, that all looks so much fun. I can't wait to try some of this. Tell me, for teams that are looking into working with MCPs and particularly who are in GitHub and mm -hmm. developing GitHub, like what are some use cases that you think will be just super relevant? How is it going to change the way developers work? It's helping us scale. And it's helping me scale. It's helping the developers scale. And you can actually take it further. So you can say, list the most important issues. And then you can have it try to implement fixes for the issues. You can say like, okay, this issue looks important. Can you implement a fix for it and do a pull request? And it will do that. It might need a bit of handholding, but it's it's faster than than writing the code yourself. So this is, is early days, I think across the board for all of this technology, but you will see it writing code and helping you as a developer scale up. I love the fact that it's open and it will be available for any tool that supports a model context protocol yep. and that is also open source. What's coming up next? What are your next priorities for the project? I think we want to really attack that problem of grouping the tools and, and helping the LLM get a little better at picking the right tool for the task. We're also interested in making this um, a remote server. So if you look at the MCP protocol, there's two types of server. There's local servers, which this is, but there's also remote server that's that's web-based. And we are working on that because we want to make the user flow and the user installation in particular um, a lot easier. Instead of having to have Docker, you can simply add a URL. This is such a cool opportunity to get into a project super early and yeah. help it grow. So please go to the repo. You can use gh.io forward slash ncp. That's going to take you directly to the repo with all the documentation. Give it a try. Remember to leave a start on the project. And I can't wait to see how it's going to grow. It's now over 10,000 stars and it's only beginning. Thank you, Toby, for showing it to us. Thank you, Andrea. And that was your first look at GitHub's new open source MCP server. Have you installed it yet? Are you using it? Drop us a note in the comments and let us know how it's working out for you. And if you found this helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you never miss another feature update or dev tip. Push those changes to main and we'll catch you on the next release.